Hello, Summoners, and welcome to another episode of Pro Guide's OP Picker Ban, now on patch 10.12. These champions are a bit overtuned for one reason or another, and they have the power to affect your games more than they otherwise should. In light of that, you'll want to either deny their existence altogether or secure them for your own team. Before we get into it, though, our question of the day is which champion would make the best roommate? Let us know your answers in the comments, or you can even hop into our shiny new Discord to discuss today's question with your peers. We have all kinds of discussions going on in there about all of Riot's games, and it's such a great new place to meet friends and teammates. Just click on the link in the description below. So with all that out of the way, let's begin. Darius is our first big bad solo queue monster in 10.12, and for good reason. Ghost is buffed and he's going to be on the loose. Darius profiles as one of the most prolific lane bullies in League of Legends, with the caveat that he's gated by poor movement. Ghost has always been a popular choice in solo queue for Darius, and with the newest buffs, it's looking to push the hand of Noxus over the edge. Starting at the top, Darius' iconic passive hemorrhage is responsible for a lot of his damage output and ability to win longer trades. More specifically, Darius' attacks and damaging abilities cause enemies to bleed for physical damage for 5 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. As a damage over time mechanic, the damage can become pretty overwhelming and surprise players less familiar with the champion. On top of that, Darius gains Noxian Might when he's managed to stack hemorrhage 5 times on an enemy champion, granting him bonus attack damage and making all his attacks and abilities instantly stack five stacks of hemorrhage onto new targets. Yeah, yikes. Hemorrhage sounds overwhelming enough, but Darius's Q, Decimate, truly makes him a menace in a long fight. Decimate strikes all of Darius' opponents in a circle around him, healing him based on damage dealt to champions on the outside of the blade. If it wasn't enough that Darius is stacking damage on you like no tomorrow, he heals too. Once he gets ahead, it can be a real nightmare. Moving on, Darius might rely on a lot of movement speed modifiers, but his W, Crippling Strike, easily slows enemies while also serving as an auto attack reset to quickly stack the hemorrhage passive. It's nothing too special, but anything that helps keep Darius on the opposition is incredibly useful. And then we get to Darius's E, Apprehend. We know you all love hook champs, and Darius chimes in with an area of effect hook of his own. What a lot of people don't recognize is that Apprehend's passive actually grants Darius armor penetration as he levels it up throughout the game, capping out at 35%. That's more armor penetration than a mortal reminder and is barely matched by Lord Dominic's regards. All of that was built up for Darius's ultimate ability, Noxian Guillotine. Or as the community likes to call it, the dunk. Darius swings down with his axe and strikes a champion for physical damage. Yeah, that doesn't sound all that special, but when he kills an enemy champion, he immediately gets to use Noxian Guillotine again, while also gaining Noxian Might. We mentioned hemorrhage stacks before, but if you have five of those on a poor, unsuspecting champion, Noxian Guillotine deals true damage. Once you've got Noxian Might going alongside Ghost and Phage-based movement speed bonuses, you become a steam engine running down everything in your path. Singed is a little less popular than our Noxian friend Darius here, but he benefits from Ghost as much as any other champion. Don't you remember that old adage, don't chase the Singed? Yeah, well, that's going to continue to be the case. It's not difficult to remember why you don't chase Singed. His Q, Poison Trail, deals magic damage to anyone following his path, and it seemingly never ends. Combined with Rylai's Crystal Scepter and the eventual stacking of Conqueror, you're in for a slow and poisonous time. If you think that's annoying, Singed's W, Mega Adhesive, comes into the mix as another slow. But this time, it's AoE and lying on the ground. Even worse, once you're stuck, you're stuck. You can't use Flash or any other movement abilities, giving your opponents all the time in the world to make your day sad. Poison and a slow field are a huge part of Singed, but he has one more iconic ability, his E, Fling. Yeah, he just deals damage and throws you over his shoulder like it's no big deal. Old school League of Legends players will remember the classic times of I'm helping when Singed flips someone out of your Jarvan Cataclysm or brings the tank closer to your team. In a lot of situations, the crowd control is disorienting and sets the enemy to take tons of damage from Singed's poison trail. You can also root anyone that you fling into Mega Adhesive, and that's pretty useful. And lastly, for the Mad Chemist is his ultimate ability, Insanity Potion, which quite literally makes him insane. Singe gains bonus ability power, armor, magic resistance, movement speed, health regeneration, and mana regeneration for 25 seconds. Yeah, he basically feels unstoppable. Combined with Ghost, 
Singe just runs around you for days, laughing as you slowly fall ill to his poison and flinging sensations. There's a lot of junglers out there with neat tricks and ways to make you pull your hair out, but Olaf has been the same old berserker since the beginning. He likes to run at you till you die, plain and simple. With Ghost seeing a significant buff this patch, Olaf might even see more play with the Predator Keystone to make him even faster as he chases down his prey and ganks you in the early game. As I said before, Olaf is a simple man. He throws axe and he hopes you die. Olaf's first ability, Q, Undertow, is literally that. Olaf throws his axe in a line skill shot, dealing physical damage and slowing the enemy. The catch here is, if you pick it up, you significantly lower the cooldown and continue to chain Undertows as you whack away at their HP. As Olaf whacks away at his enemy's HP, he can also activate his W, Vicious Strikes, which grants bonus attack speed and lifesteal based on missing health. Olaf deals lots of damage and heals off of it. Combine that with his passive where he gains bonus attack speed based on his missing health, and he's a self-sustaining killing machine. Oh, did we mention Olaf's a killing machine? Yeah, well, it gets worse. He has true damage built into his E, Reckless Swing. Reckless Swing is a point and click true damage nuke that just slams your HP. Not only does it scale with AD, but for every Olaf auto attack, its cooldown is reduced by one second. Yep, he hurts. And then there's Olaf's famous ultimate, Ragnarok. For a brief six seconds, Olaf ignores all crowd control, gains bonus attack damage, and gains bonus movement speed toward enemy champions and towers. Combine that with Ghost, and he is absolutely all over you, sustaining himself and slamming you for a million damage in a mere seconds. A Viking with Ghost at his side is one thing, but a haunted centaur with four legs is another. Hecarim craves movement speed like no other. His passive even grants bonus attack damage based on how fast he's moving. Hecarim has often struggled with an expensive build path focused around Trinity Force, but with Ghost being an exponentially better summoner for team fights, he might not have to deal with being so ineffective in the early games at times. Hecarim's first ability is his Q, Rampage, which is about as simple as it gets. He rampages while spinning his scythe around in circles for physical AoE damage. The more you use it, the lower the cooldown stays, making it a great damage tool in a long fight. It also makes for easy sheen procs from your Trinity Force. Hecarim's next ability also checks in as an AoE skill, Spirit of Dread. Hecarim's W surrounds himself with AoE magic damage, healing him for 30% of the damage dealt from any source within the area. This makes Hecarim a menace in longer fights, where he has both Conqueror and Spirit of Dread healing. And then we get the clippity cloppity of Hecarim, Devastating Charge. Hecarim powers up his hooves and gains bonus movement speed while also ignoring unit collision. His next auto attack deals bonus physical damage based on distance traveled and knocks back the target. Combined with Ghost, almost nothing can outrun Hecarim, and that's a terrifying sight. Similar to many auto attack based skills, Devastating Charge also resets Hecarim's auto attack timer, which means it can be used for clutch damage in close quarters. That's all good and great, but Hecarim's ultimate ability is what's truly terrifying. Hecarim's R, Onslaught of Shadows, makes Hecarim unstoppable in a target direction, terrifying all targets in the area, making them flee for one to two seconds based on distance traveled. It's worth noting that regardless if Hecarim goes the full distance or not, the spectral riders of the animation will continue onward. Onslaught of Shadows makes for both a great pick and initiation tool at the right times. Vladimir, like most champions, loves himself a bit of mobility, and when considering the new reset nature of Ghost, this Hemomancer is about to get even more scary. As it stands, Vladimir has very little movement modifiers in his kit, with movement speed bonuses coming from a short burst in his W, Sanguine Pool, and from the Crimson Rush passive attached to his Q, Transfusion. Speaking of Transfusion, it's the bread and butter of Vladimir's kit, and his primary damaging tool. Vladimir points and clicks, dealing magic damage, and healing himself a flat amount plus a bonus AP ratio. For each cast of Transfusion, Vladimir generates a stack of Bloodthirst over its cooldown, which finds itself neatly below his health bar. At two stacks, Vladimir gains Crimson Rush for two and a half seconds, granting 10% bonus movement speed for half a second. Yeah, that movement speed isn't negligible, but it doesn't quite get the job done on its own. Vladimir's Sanguine Pool also provides a brief boost of movement speed, 35% bonus MS to be exact, while slowing enemies on top of the pool. More importantly though, he becomes untargetable for two seconds, while also ignoring unit collision. Combined with Ghost, Vladimir can get where he wants pretty quickly. Vladimir's next major damaging ability is Tides of Blood. For 1.5 seconds, he sacrifices 8% of his maximum health to charge up a Nova of Blood Bolts. Think Hextech Protobelt, but AoE, slowing targets and dealing damage to all enemies hit. 
Tides of Blood slows Vladimir, but with both Phase Rush and Ghost, sometimes he might not even feel it, making the ability as easy to hit as ever. Then we get to Vladimir's ultimate, Hemo Plague. It's nothing special when describing it, but it has a huge impact. Vladimir infects all enemy champions in a target area, causing them to take 10% increased damage for 4 seconds, while also taking bonus magic damage at the end of the duration, healing Vladimir for a percentage of the damage dealt. Vladimir's kit is pretty straightforward, but Ghost and the late game itemization can really have him go on a rampage. Annie might be the simplest champion in League of Legends, and we love her for that. Luckily for her, she'll also be loving the ghost changes to help her stay in the fight more meaningfully as the game goes on. Annie's passive is known as Pyromania. When she casts an ability, she gains a stack of Pyromania up to 4. At 4, Annie becomes Energized, meaning that her next damaging ability will come with a stun that scales with levels, making her a potent engaged threat with both Flash and Ghost. Annie's first ability is a classic point-and-click nuke, Disintegrate. She hauls a fireball at her enemy and deals damage. If Disintegrate kills the target, it refunds the mana cost and half of its cooldown, making it ideal for stacking up Pyromania. Following up Disintegrate is her W, Incinerate, which deals damage in a small cone in front of her. It's largely centered around damage, but can make for a small AoE stun if Pyromania is fully stacked up. Having Ghost on deck also makes it easier to get in effective range. Annie's next ability is her E, Molten Shield, providing some bonus movement speed that scales beautifully with Ghost. On top of that, it gives her a notch of damage reduction on top of a Thornmail-like effect that causes enemy damage dealers to take recoil damage. And then we get to the bear in the room, Tibbers. Annie's ultimate is Summon Tibbers, and largely serves as an engagement tool as well as an all-in nuke. Tibbers also follows Annie for 45 seconds or until it dies. Of all of Annie's abilities, this is the one most comboed with Pyromania, providing a great AoE stun to start teamfights. Annie can feel pretty underwhelming without Flash, but Ghost can definitely make up for that when it's off cooldown. Yeah, our man Ezreal has a built-in Flash, but most carries benefit from having two movement speed summoners. Ezreal generally functions as a great scaling carry that sacrifices a little bit of pressure in the laning phase for a great damage payout in the form of Trinity Force and a fully stacked Mura Mana. Even then, Ezreal isn't all that bad in the laning phase. His Q, Mystic Shot, allows you to farm safely from range while building up stacks on Terror of the Goddess. Combined with W, Essence Flux, Ezreal can also take some nifty short trades at a safe distance. Ezreal's E, Arcane Shift, almost needs no introduction, but it's the tool that keeps him safe at all times as a short cooldown flash. Two flashes and a ghost? Yeah, that screams unkillable. With all these tools on hand, Ezreal can keep a safe distance while raining damage with Mystic Shots and his ultimate True Shot Barrage. Once he starts getting kills, it will also make it extremely easy to chase down kills with the bonus movement speed. Vayne is the supreme carry of the late game, and Ghost giving her the ability to dodge more skill shots and hunt down more kills is truly terrifying. Vayne has a pretty simple kit compared to most champions. She wants to tumble to keep the pressure on and dodge key skill shots. Her W Silver Bolts provide true damage on every proc, making for an insane late game carry profile. Condemn serves as a nice bit of self peel and crowd control, while her ultimate Final Hour has a similar effect to Ghost bonus movement speed that gets extended on champion takedown. Get ready for Vayne to run more team fights with an extra defensive summoner that doubles as an overwhelmingly offensive one. She might have short range, but a well-played Vayne will always find the time to strike. Ghost has been the talk of the show, but a small rune is getting a nice change, unflinching. When a champion is below 30% HP, that champion will gain 10% tenacity, a nice universal option that's relatively easy to proc compared to using a summoner spell. Supports like Leona and Alistair will greatly appreciate the change, as they exist to disrupt team fights with their crowd control. Leona in particular can be very annoying with the new tenacity as she deals decent damage with her W, Eclipse, and Sunlight passive. That tiny bit of tenacity can also make all the difference between landing another stun with either her Q, Shield to Daybreak, or E, Zenith Blade. Much like Leona, Alistair benefits from unflinching and being able to apply his crowd control as much as possible, while also soaking as much crowd control as possible. We all know Alistair. His headbutt plus pulverize combo is deadly in the right hands and can single-handedly win any fight on its own. Once you throw in his E, Trample, which functions as an extra stun, along with his ultimate, Unbreakable Will, you have an unstoppable meat shield. Alistair hasn't seen as much play lately due to the prevalence of champions like Nautilus or Leona doing his job better, but keep him on your radar. 
All right, that concludes our video for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. If you guys want more content to help you improve, check out ProGuides.com, where we've teamed up with pro players to create guides designed to take your game to the next level. Also, keep an eye on our YouTube channel, where we're constantly uploading new content just like this. Good luck on the Rift, everyone, and we'll see you all next time.